Okay, so I'm at the Veil of Tone stage, uh, and I've just applied the Veil of Tone over the entire surface of the drawing by, by putting the Vine Charcoal Dust on and brushing it up and down like that and side to side. So I'm, I'm continuing to brush it until it stops um, getting any lighter. So when you first put on your Vine Charcoal, it's gonna be just going to look fairly dark, and when you brush it out, it's gonna get more and more even but it's also gonna get lighter as the more you brush it. So we wanna sort of brush it until it seems to stop releasing. Now, in the forehead, you can see um, that uh, I have started to use my kneaded eraser and to model the whole surface. So I've lifted out a lot of the veil of tone at this stage. And I've lifted out more than you may think to lift out. So I'd like you to look at what I've done so far here, and you can compare it to um, the photo and video footage of, of Eva in the pose. And you'll notice that you see more, you're gonna see more uh, darker tones taking place in right in this area here. I'm trying to make my eraser into a pointer. So um, there's much darker tones um, than, than you may think to um, lift out. But what we have to have foresight about is the addition of white chalk. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm preparing the location where the white chalk is going to live. Um, and I need to put down white chalk in this area on the highlight of her forehead and probably small amounts here and here. Um, and in order, to, in order to do that successfully, I've got to lift out a little bit more around that area than I might want to, because I need to create a zone where transition will occur. Now, another thing that happens is that when we put white down, suddenly this looks much darker. And so I'm trying to predict what value I'm gonna need there by the time I put the white chalk on. Okay, give me one second. I left my white chalk across the studio. Okay, and let's try this. In this drawing, uh, I'm gonna use um, two different chalk pencils. They're both the Stabilo Carbothello brand, and one is the white white, the other is the cream white. So the numbers are 105 on the cream and 100 on the white. Um, a little trick that I like to use um, is to start with the cream. And rest my pinky on the side and start by hatching in the area of the highlight. I like to use the cream first because it's not as bright as the white, so it helps me sneak up on the value. But also, they're in general with the behavior of light on flesh. The general lights of, of light on form on, on flesh tend to be warmer in temperature than the highlight, and the highlight tends to be colder especially when, if we work from, from natural light, which is a cool light, or if we work from um, a, lot of the, a lot of the incandescent lights we work with, or that I use anyway and have used in our class, these are um, LED lights that simulate northern, northern light. So they're also cool. So what happens is the general, the general light mass takes on the temperature of the local color of the form. So in that case, in, in the case of human flesh, it's going to be warm because it's going to be, it's going to be somewhere in the range of, of brown or tan, yellow, orange, anything warmish. Uh, it tends to be a flesh tone. And then the highlight will show us the color of the light source. So back to the initial reason why I'm doing this is that I feel that the warm cream chalk simulates the light um, that we see of the local 
color of her flesh tone, which is warm. It's also not as bright as what's going to happen ultimately where we, um, where we have a bright, a very bright value highlight, which we want to be cold. Now, if you feel that you're going to place the white over an area where you have some charcoal residue, like I was about to, get rid of that charcoal. And then con continue forward hatching. Now, another question you may be wondering is, why am I jumping to the white already? Well, the reason why I'm jumping to the white already is that I want to set the key of the drawing. I want to see as I go forward what my lightest lights are going to look like. And um, given that we do have the brightest value of the face occurring up in the forehead, I'm just looking to see if that's true. We have some contenders um, here and here um, for this light. But I think that those three are about equal. So we can use this highlight on the forehead as a key. And as we work forward in the drawing, we refer back to the brightest light that we make to see if we need to be brighter than that, which we won't, uh, or darker and how much darker. So make it as bright, make the key light, the highest, the highest light, make it as bright as you want to. And I often push it about as bright as the chalk will let me go. And I, that ensures that I get a very luminous, bright, powerful light on the form. Now remember, we don't want to be choppy with white chalk. We, we want to be really gradient and gradual. We don't want, we don't want to catch any edges. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my larger bristle brush that I have reserved for white chalk. I can see it's just it's kind of bleached at the tip of it from all the white chalk. And I'm going to feather this out. The hatches that I see when I look at the camera that's recording now are super harsh looking uh, compared to the ones I see on the drawing. So uh, I'm starting to learn that when I see your guys' drawings on the other end, uh, and, I, and I often say things like, you need to blend more, or it's looking too gritty, um, I understand that it's probably not as rough as the picture is showing. I know that when I, this particular video quality footage, for whatever it is, really is quite harsh when it comes to hatches, and also in contrast, like um, everything is far darker on the screen here. The veil of tone that I'm looking at, it just looks way darker than, um, than it appears in real life here. Okay, so I have blended out that cream chalk on her forehead. And um, one of the funnest parts is um, after you've laid down that, that layer, uh, coming back and we're gonna now put in the white, white chalk. So you notice I've got the, the, the white, not the cream, but the bright white and it's cooler in temperature. It's more, it's more of a white shifting, just sneaking a little bit of its character towards blue. And one of the biggest secrets that I can teach in painting, if you're gonna paint, is that the highlight has to turn towards the opposite temperature than the general light. And that's why I say, normally that means the highlight's gonna be cold and the general light, which is all the stuff out here, is gonna be warm. And um, to take it a step further, if you're painting, you can um, look at what color you're using and try to make the highlight mostly be white, but have some of the complementary color in it. So when I look at her head, her forehead, um, the video shows me that the local color here is of an orangish hue. You know, it's not, it's not high chroma orange, it's, it's more of an earthy orange, but um, it is an orange family. 
and uh, it shifts towards browns, and brown is actually a low chroma orange. Um, and so if I were painting this painting, I'd be making, uh, putting blue, because blue is the complementary color to orange. Many people will just take, when they're painting, they'll just take their highlight and they'll just add white to the local color uh, of the general light. And so they might get the value right, but it doesn't feel like a highlight because it doesn't shimmer and vibrate. When you put the complementary color or just at least the opposite temperature into the highlight, then you get a vibration and it feels like light reflecting off of the form. Now, is it okay to go back to the cream? Sure. I'm going back to the cream right now. I see a little sub form here in her forehead. Just a slight buckling of form there. You can see almost like the hint of consternation. You know, her stepdad is asking her to pose in the studio. She's a little bit irritated. So I'm going to capture that little sub form there. And brush it out. So I'm, now I'm polishing the form. So try to, try to get into this habit of brushing and then hatching and then brushing and then hatching. Ultimately, you, you want to leave some hatches on the surface just for charm uh, of drawing, drawing language. We look at the old masters and we often see a few hatches that are just very conspicuous and sort of placed down deliberately to show some turning of the form. So the hatches communicate the sculptural properties. But now what I've done what, that you can see is I have set the key of the drawing. I now see what my brightest bright looks like. And I don't have my darkest dark yet, but that's a little bit more forgiving uh, in terms of setting the key. But as I move forward into these other areas, I will be able to determine what needs to be, um, what needs white chalk, what needs a little bit of white chalk, what needs to be paper, what needs to be uh, a little bit of the veil of tone, like you can see it right there, just a little bit of residue of the veil of tone left behind. Uh, it's easier for us to determine those kinds of things um, once we have set the key. Now, going back later, if, if we've lifted out something, which we have here, that needs to be darker, um, that's where we're going to come back in with our, our charcoal pencil. And we're going to start to bring that value back in. And with the pencil now, we have a little bit more finite control over the actual value that we achieve. So... Uh, this will also be blended. So put down, um, I'm putting down that charcoal pencil. Remember with charcoal pencil, if you put it, you put it down at one value, when you blend it, it's going to get a little darker. So when you put it down, you may want to budget out the value that you're intending to arrive at. So you can see as soon as I go over it, it gets much more presence. It gets darker. It also gets smoother. So that's good. We like that. Um, but we... We don't want to overshoot the mark by hatching the pencil onto the drawing um, to a state where it looks like exactly the right value. And then we blend it and find out that we actually uh, made, it, made it go way too dark. So, so hatch it gently on, then blend it out and see, see where you're at at that point. And once again, when I look at the screen, boy, it sure is unforgiving. Like I have, it doesn't look like it needs a transition right there in real life. But when I look at the screen, I can see I have to turn this a bit more. So it's sort of like one of those blemish mirrors. You know, if we have a blemish mirror and we see every single flaw in our face uh, and then we attend to that flaw, then the idea is hopefully we've got something that looks more perfect to the, to the average eye. But um, it's, uh, it's definitely more harsh on the video screen, but I like, I like that. So that, so the, in the way, in that way I can use the video screen as, as an aid and a tool. Um, and so at about this point, I may want to start to, um, add in darker, like some of the darkest values like that will, that we, we will see are up here in the hair. 
And so by just getting even just a few of those in here at this time, then I can really start to see the, the, a, a more comprehensive value range um, of the full drawing. And I'm blending that out. I want to get rid of that grittiness. So I'm going smooth. And I've been, I've been, the comment I've had repeated to a lot of people is just, you know, blend your charcoal harder, blend it more, get rid of that grittiness, fill in the grain of the paper. So um, I'm really pushing it in there. Well, you know, once I know it's safe to put it down in that spot, like I know it's going to go there, well, then I'm going to really push it into the paper and try to get rid of all grittiness by blending it out. And remember, one way to get it smooth is to layer your blending and your hatching. So I put, I hatched it on and then I blended it. Now I'm hatching it again. And then I'm going to blend it again. So really um, layer, layer your blending, layer your hatchery, hatching, and, and blend in between layers of hatching. Okay, you can see on the, just on, on the right side here, um, the, the fingertip resting on the page starts to do that effect off to the right of her head. So I'm just going to take my brush and get rid of that. I don't want to look at that. So work that out as best you can. And see if we can, I didn't really get rid of it completely, but it's not so conspicuous. And so I really shouldn't be resting my finger on the page like that. I should be using a mall stick. Um, but I just got a little lazy here since I was juggling a lot of things with the, uh, with the film footage and the drawing itself. Um, but normally I would grab my, my mall stick, uh, which you can simulate a mall stick out of anything. So the head of them, you may recognize this from old master paintings, take a mall stick rest it across the side of the easel, and then you rest your hand on the mall stick um, to do careful work. And that way you don't have to rest your hand out in the veil of tone region and smudge it. Anything can, anything can work as a, as a mall stick for you. It could be a broom. It could be just a, a wooden dowel. Um, it has this big padded head on it for resting on paintings, but you don't really need that. You just need a long stick. It could even be a ruler, anything that will span the distance. Okay, so now we've got her forehead there and we can see um, the, the value ranges that need to be used for the rest of the drawing and the way forward should be pretty clear.